Now we all know how our lungs resaturate oxygen into the systemic system of body. But you ever considered who discovered the physiology? A prediction that preceded by 400 years the discovery of pulmonary capillaries by Marcello. Welcome to BZ Daily News in this episode of Muslim Science Heritage. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about the first scientist to describe the pulmonary circulation. An Arab physician, Ibn al-Nafis, was the first person to challenge the long-held contention of the gallant school that blood could pass through the cardiac interventricular septum and in keeping with this, he believed that all the blood that reached the left ventricle passed through the lung. He correctly stated that the blood must pass from the right ventricle to the left ventricle by the way of lung. He also stated that there must be small communication or pores between the pulmonary artery and vein. It was not until 300 years later that the scholars in Europe came to the same conclusion. One of the most important writings of Ibn al-Nafiz was his commentary on anatomy in Avicenna's canon. He was born in the year 1210 at the al kursh near Damascus. He studied medicine in Damascus and he moved to Cairo where he practiced and taught medicine in al nasiri Hospital. Then in 1285 he became the chief physician of the Mansuri Hospital, a position he held until he died in 1288 at the age of 80. In his Kitab al-Shamil, he gives insight into his view of medicine and human relations. His surgical technique had three stages. Step 1, which he calls the stage of presentation for clinical diagnosis. This was to give the patient information on how it was to be performed and the knowledge it was based on. Second, the operative stage was to perform the surgery itself. The final step was to have a post-surgery appointment and a routine of checkups which he called the post-operative period. In his book al Mughiza, he distinguished the difference between kidney stone and bladder stone. He is credited with providing the earliest recorded reference to the concept of metabolism. He described how both the body and its part are in continuous state of dissolution and nourishment, so they are inevitably undergoing a permanent change. The most voluminous of his books is Al-Shamil P. Al-Tib, the comprehensive book on medicine, commentary on Hippocrates, the nature of man, commentary of endemics, commentary on endemics, Al-Nafis revisited the cases of illness described by Hippocrates in his text, while comparing and contrasting those cases to his own cases and conclusions. The choice of foodstuff, a largely original contribution which was on the effects of diet on health. He also wrote a number of books and commentaries on different topics including on medicine, law, logic, philosophy, theology, grammar and environment. His importance in the history of medicine was not fully recognized in the western circles until the quite recent. The majority of his work remained unknown in the West until their rediscovery at the beginning of the 20th century. Since then, a new evaluation of his work has been carried out with a specific appreciation being given to his physiological observations which were ahead of their time. Al-Nafis is sometimes regarded as the greatest physiologist of the Middle Age. We cannot credit we cannot credit him in just one video, but the purpose is to learn more about Muslim scientists whose work are not fully recognized till this age. So if you made it to the end of the video, press the bell icon.